Hi everyone, today what we're going to be doing is a box opening and a slight review with a brand new Corsair AX860i fully modular 80 plus platinum power supply. Okay, so having a look at the front of the box, you can see everything's nicely laid out. We've got the Corsair AX860i. Now remember that the i series is, signifies that it's the digital DSP and not the analog version that they have as well. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see that's 80 plus platinum certified, which gives you a 92% energy efficiency. And it's compatible with their core centering software, which is going to give you real time monitoring and control. So on the back of the box, you can see that we have these two graphs. The top graph is actually a power efficiency graph, and it shows us the efficiency with a 20% load, a 50% load, and a 100% load. Now right below that, we have our fan noise graph. Now looking at the graph, you can see that the fan doesn't even kick in until after it exceeds a 30% system load, meaning that your power supply is going to be completely silent below a 30% system load, which is great. And Corsair has so much faith in this new technology, they're giving you a massive seven year warranty. Now this is going to be very attractive to a lot of people, especially for me, meaning I'm not going to have to upgrade it for a very long time. On the top flap of the box, you can see it gives us an overview of all the modular cables that are included with this power supply. Now note that all the wires are actually black. Um, I don't know why that picture shows that <laughs> there's a colored wires, but they are in fact all black, which Corsair actually pays OEMs a little more to do that. So that's really cool Corsair. It gives it a really nice sleek look and it makes it so, you know, even though the sleeving is real dense on these cables that it is, you'll not see any color showing through these cables. But I'm not going to spend too much time going over these because I am going to take an in-close look at these cables later in the review. Now we are ready to open up the box. So what I'm going to do is just cut the little piece of tape there and open up the flaps. Typical Corsair packaging here. We just tip it upside down, slide it right out. You got this nice black box that everything's housed into. So all we got to do is open up the flap on one end. And here we have a lot of the stuff. We have the warranty information here. So next we have information on where you can download the Corsair Link software. And here we have the full user manual. So here we have the power supply resting underneath this nice soft foam. And to the right of that we have all our modular cables inside this nice little goodie bag here. We're going to go ahead and pull it out. I'm going to go ahead and put it to its side and look at that in a little bit. Underneath that we have a little baggie here with some goodies. We've got a bunch of zip ties. We've got a Corsair case logo and the uh, screws to mount the power supply to the back of your case. So what I like about the soft foam that Corsair uses is that it's soft and when you compress it it expands back to its original shape unlike hard foam which will collapse and there goes all your protection. Okay so the power supply is inside this velvet bag. Now this is great if you want to sometime sleeve your modular cables. You have somewhere to put your power supply away from dust and possibly your cat. So we're going to go ahead and pull it out of its velvety bag. We're just going to unloosen the ties at the top, open it up, and slide it right out. And it is also covered with this plastic wrapping, which is really cool. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and look at what modular cables actually come with this power supply. So we're going to go ahead and open up the bag, and you're greeted with a silver-looking bag. We're going to go ahead and open that up right now. And it is the Corsair Link USB dongle that you will need if you want to do Corsair Link. Now this is an option, you don't have to do this, but what you'll do is you'll go ahead and plug that into a USB header on your motherboard. And we have this massive, it looks like 16 gauge wire for your power supply. So next we have one of our two peripheral cables. Now these cables each have four connections each and they actually utilize their flat cable design which is really nice, great for cable management and good airflow. So next we have one of two 6 plus 2 pin PCI Express connections. Now unlike the other ones, this one actually splits into another 6 plus 2 pin PCI Express so you will be able to run um, a card that utilizes two connections which is one cable which is really nice. It's going to give you cleaner looks, you know, better cable management, better airflow and with the Corsair AX's 60i's massive 71.6 amp rail you'll be able to easily run two 680's in Sly. Okay so after that we have our second uh, 6 plus 2 pin split cable. So that's give us a total of four connections on just two of the cables, which is really cool. After that we got our second uh, peripheral cable, so that gives us a total of eight connections. After that we have one of our three SATA cables. Again, that one has four connections on that cable, again utilizing the flat black cable design, which is great. So next we have our 24 pin motherboard cable. Now this is a 20 plus 4 pin cable. It has the black sleeving on there and the black wires as well. So 
it's really dense too you won't see any of the black wires underneath it and it's a uh, good length too so next we have one of our single 6 plus 2 pin PCI Express cables now this is not a splitter this is just a single connector on it and this will bring your total up to 6 6 plus 2 pin cables total here we have another 6 plus 2 pin single cable so here we have our last single 6 plus 2 pin PCI Express cable so what I thought I'd do is measure the PCI Express cable for you so we're just going to go ahead, stretch it out there, and it looks to be about 25 inches long, so it's going to be plenty long enough to reach inside your case and hook into one of your graphics. So next we have our 8-pin 4 plus 4 EPS cable. Now do not get this confused with the 8-pin PCI Express cable, because these are two totally different cables. So here we have our second and our last 8-pin EPS 4 plus 4 pin cable. So just with the PCI Express cable, I'm going to also measure the 8-pin EPS cable. Now this cable is usually one that people have most problems with that they need long enough you know for it to go behind their motherboard tray up to the very top of their large case. So we're going to go ahead and measure that one for you and it looks to be about 27 inches. Now if you got a large case like a Corsair 800D this probably will not be long enough but this is going to be different for everyone so go ahead and measure before you make your final decision. So here we have our second serial ATA cable with four connections. So here we have our last of our SATA cables. Now this brings our total cable count to three SATA cables, each with four connections on each, which gives you a total of 12 SATA connections. So here next we have two floppy drive adapter cables. Now these have a Molex on one end and you have your four pin floppy on the other in case you have some old hardware. So finally, last but not least, we have the rest of our core serial link cables that you'll need if you want to does if you know if you decide you want to do the Corsair link you don't have to again but it is awesome an awesome feature that comes with this power supply you just plug that end right into that little dongle and that end goes into your motherboard here's just an overall look of all the cables that come with this power supply so here is the new Corsair AX 860i power supply it features a digital signal processor for real time voltage regulation it has extremely tight DC to DC regulation for your 3.3 volt, 5 volt, and 12 volt rails, and it includes MOSFETs that have lower losses than the conventional output ratification schemes. An advanced 4 layer modular connector board PCB ensures a better ground return plane, lower resistance, and lower voltage drops. This combined with the circuit trace optimization and advanced filtering techniques, how to minimize ripple and noise so you're going to get extreme clean and efficient power. It also features a fully modular cable system, self test switch, over voltage protection, over current protection, over temperature protection, and short circuit protection. And it houses a single 12 volt rail running at 71.6 amps, which can actually be split into multiple rails using the software. And it also is quiet and has an efficient operation, so let's stop talking about it and take a closer look. Okay, so first what we'll do is take a look at the bottom of the power supply, and here we have a 120 millimeter Yate Loon fan. It's real quiet, it moves a lot of air. You can see the straight grills moving across, it gives it a nice clean look, matching the outer part of the bottom of this power supply. So here we are taking a look at the back of the power supply now. We have a nice honeycomb mesh grill on the back. We have a nice little AX860i logo, the on off switch, and we also have the port for your plug. So on the top of the power supply we have a sticker that features all the information about the rails. We have a DC output a max load chart and also our total power of 860 watts. So here is where you will connect all your module cables into. At the top we have a COM port and that is for the Corsair Link dongle that will connect right into there. Then we have our 24 pin ATX. Below that we have all of our 6 plus 2 pin PCI Express as well as our 4 plus 4 pin CPU. There we have our peripheral and SATA connections where you will plug into. And at the top we have our self-test switch, which we'll look at in a bit. So I really like the overall paint job on the power supply itself. It features a nice flat black paint job, a really reflective stickers on the sides of the power supply, and overall just gives it all a very nice look. So an awesome feature of this power supply is its self-test switch. Now this gives you the ability to test your brand new power supply to see if it's a DOA, but you must have your power supply outside the system and with no modular cables connected in order for this to work. So what you do is you're going to go ahead and turn on the power switch on the back of the power supply. And then you simply push the test button in. A green light should confirm that it's working properly. And you should see the fan spin up to 
and we'll go ahead and take a listen to that. And this about sums up my review and box opening of the brand new Corsair AX860i. I'd like to thank all you guys for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe for more upcoming reviews, box openings, benchmarks, and build logs. Again, thank you all for watching and have a great day.